Years after the Dallas Mavericks traded the rights to drafting Trey Young and another first round pick to acquire Luka Doncic, it's been perceived as a win-win trade. But in this video, I'm here to tell you why this might be one of the most lopsided trades in NBA history. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Amateur Hour TV for another video on the second channel in the Amateur Hour Production Network. And on this channel, I go through additional NBA-related content, usually concerning the Toronto Raptors, but with this channel, I just have a little bit more freedom to do what I want, and I really wanted to talk about Luka Doncic and, of course, that 60-point triple-double that he had last night to take down the New York Knicks. And on this channel, it's just additional NBA content in more of a professional sort of setting where I can just be myself a little bit more the vibes are different different content but still NBA discussion from myself the host of amateur hour sports so the video today as I mentioned is going to be about Luka Doncic because I mean I I just I just had to get some sort of thoughts in on Luka Doncic after the way he played in that in that game yesterday against the New York Knicks he was absolutely scintillating I didn't catch the entire game but I did catch late on the games I saw that Dallas Mavericks kind of mounting that comeback and in turn also went into overtime there Luka Doncic I mean I'm sure you've, you if you're familiar with the NBA in any sort of way you saw exactly what Luka Doncic did last night 60 point triple double 21 rebounds 10 assists the first ever 60 20 10 game in NBA history just absolutely special from a special player he's been tipped to win the MVP this season the only thing stopping him from winning MVP are his teammates at the Dallas Mavericks the Dallas Mavericks are a garbage team without Luka Doncic I will give credit you know Dinwiddie hit some big shots late in the game to to help the Mavericks get over get over I mean get to overtime first of all then get over the line in that overtime period but some people have said that this is the greatest individual basketball performance of all time just based on the fact that the Mavericks like they barely come back they come back from nine points down with 32 seconds to go the Knicks with a very Knicks-like collapse, I will say, but to win in overtime with this stat line, it suggests that the Dallas Mavericks needed every bit of what Luka Doncic gave them in this game to actually get over the line and come away with the win. I know it's only a regular season game. That's what other people are saying, but Luka Doncic has been absolutely astonishing this season. The way he has played, it, it, it's scintillating. 33.6 points per game, which would be by far a career high for the player who's never had above 30 before. He's shooting above 50% from the field, above 35% from three. And I think what is just bonkers about him, this is like a guard averaging from two, 59%. 59% from two. Like that's what you normally get from like a big. This is a guard doing this with with a high degree of consistency taking 22 and a half shots a game like it is it's beyond special what Luka Doncic is accomplishing this season and what he has already accomplished with the Dallas Mavericks from an individual standpoint now the team things I will say this is not a great team that he is working with but now we go into the trade because obviously the Dallas Mavericks they did not technically draft Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic went third overall to the Atlanta Hawks in the 2018 NBA entry draft. Uh, somehow Doncic goes third. Phoenix go for DeAndre Ayton. They need a big, I mean, not a horrible pick, I, I guess. But the second pick, I cannot believe the Sacramento Kings passed on Luka Doncic. And they instead went for, oh boy, Marvin Bagley, a very famous one there. Atlanta take Luka Doncic at three. Memphis take Jaron Jackson Jr. at four. And Dallas with the fifth pick, Wanted Doncic so bad that they were willing to give up the fifth pick. Trey Young, another point guard. Doncic's not really a point guard, but he plays the point guard. They give up Trey Young and their first round pick for next season. So their fifth pick and another lottery pick for next season to move up two spots to acquire Luka Doncic. And in the years since then, it's been perceived as though, okay, Doncic is the better player, but they gave up a first along with Trey Young to get him. It seems like a pretty reasonable trade for both teams. But as time wears on here, and I don't think this is much fault from Trey Young, who is like pretty much a superstar in this league, a consistent all-star in this league. As years go on, it becomes more and more apparent to like me and many other NBA fans that this is a very lopsided trade. This is not an even trade. This is not a win-win trade. The Atlanta Hawks got fleeced in this trade because 
Sure, they have like a borderline superstar player. It appears as though Luka Doncic, the Dallas Mavericks, have an all-time player. Might I remind you, by the way, Luka Doncic is accomplishing these things. He's 23 years old. So he is nowhere near his prime yet, already doing all of the things that he is doing with his team. In terms of their playoff success, you want to talk about their greatness so far, very early on in their career. You know, Trey Young has been to a conference final, as has Luka Doncic. Uh, they're very, there really isn't many more playoff wins for Luka Doncic to speak of in comparison to Trey Young. So, you know, only two more playoff wins for Doncic. Does that really showcase how much better he is? Well, I think a good way to describe how much better Doncic is than Trey Young. Trey Young, by the way, is a great player. I'm not saying that he isn't. We're just talking about a special player in Luka Doncic. I think the best way that we can kind of not really quantify, but explain why Doncic is better. Let's put Luka Doncic on this Hawks team. Let's put Doncic on the Hawks teams throughout the the career that uh, Trey Young has had. I think the Hawks accomplish a lot more with Doncic instead of Trey Young. And I think the Dallas Mavericks are currently the exact same, if not worse, with Trey Young. And I don't think the Dallas Mavericks have near the amount of success they have had. Brief, but in small success. But I don't think the Dallas Mavericks come close to the levels they have hit in the last four years if Trey Young replaces Luka Doncic over there. I, I, and I don't think it's arguable. I, I very much don't think it's arguable. I think it, it's exceptional what Trey Young did to take down the Sixers in that conference semifinal to get to the conference final and to win two games against the Bucs. But I think Doncic could have matched that and more. And I just really don't think Trey Young can carry a team like the way Luka Doncic is carrying this Dallas Mavericks team. I, I, I just think it's as simple as that. You go roster... Roster to roster comparison, Trey Young has consistently had the better team around him. Doncic fighting for his life with his current team. He actually had some help last season in Jalen Brunson. The Dallas Mavericks, as we all know, completely botched that situation, allowing Jalen Brunson to leave for free. Dallas seemed to be kind of one of the favorites to trade for Trey Young if something were to arise there. Now, that would be quite something, but one on one, the trade. I mean, it's not one-on-one, -on -one, but even still, the Dallas Mavericks made out like bandits on this one. This isn't even considering who the, the Atlanta Hawks got in the trade. Who they got in the trade was in that first-round pick. What they eventually got in the trade is irrelevant when to, to this discussion. But if you really wanted to talk about what they got, the pick eventually landed Cam Reddish. Um, obviously, not a great draft pick there. So <laughs> I'm not considering that. But even when you do consider that, I think it gets even worse for the Atlanta Hawks. But it was a high it was it was a lottery pick yet again for that player. And thinking about it at the time, specifically right at the moment that it happened, the Atlanta Hawks were moving two spots back, still getting an all-star point guard, and we're getting another first round pick. Looking at it from the time that it happened, you know what? I can't really fault the Atlanta Hawks. Like, obviously, in hindsight, hindsight's 2020. We can make these sort of claims that, yeah, this was a horrible trade. They got fleeced. We can say that now in retrospect. But in the exact time that it happened, I remember when it happened. It seemed like Dallas were really confident in their guy. And it just was like, okay, we'll see how good these guys can become. But from an Atlanta perspective, it would be really, really hard for Atlanta to turn down another lottery pick and still get a top five pick and, an, and still a point guard from that current draft. Dallas made some great business. They were really confident in their scouting on Luka Doncic. They must have felt going into the draft that they were going to try and trade up to get him no matter what. They were really confident in their scouting. They were really confident in the player's ability. And, you know, after winning EuroLeague MVP at like 18 years old, maybe there was a reason to be high on him. People were high on Trey Young after his college season with, I want to say, Oklahoma. But um, overall, time-wise, sure, Atlanta, probably good trade in the moment. Considering where we are today, this was an extraordinarily lopsided trade, and it may go down as one of the most lopsided trades in NBA history because Doncic is breaking records. First 60, 20, and 10 game in NBA history, like not even Wilt Chamberlain put up numbers like that ever before 60 points in a triple double with that many rebounds like even even Wilt Chamberlain didn't do that do you understand how crazy this only two players have ever gotten a 60 point triple double now Luka Doncic and James Harden so already making history already breaking records at 23 years old I can only imagine 
what Luka Doncic can accomplish in his career, if the Dallas Mavericks can ever get this guy the proper help that he needs. Porzingis wasn't a great fit. Jalen Brunson, they let that one slip between their grasps. They're going to have to find some help soon if they want Luka Doncic to, stay, to feel comfortable in staying in Dallas going over the course of the next few years. Because uh, if I'm as good as Luka is, I'd become a little bit restless with what I'm seeing from the ownership and the management bringing in help along my side, especially after they botched again, that Jalen Brunson situation. So what do you guys think about this? Is this a win-win trade or is this lopsided as I am describing it to be? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that is it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching this video on Amateur TV. I know it's not Raptor specific, but I want to expand my horizons a little bit more on this channel and talk about things that I want to talk about concerning the NBA. And I think it's so cool that people out there want to see content like this. So appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to Amateur TV for more content like this. And I will see you again next time for more from the second channel.